after an hour of sleep loss, but how does daylight saving time affect our kids? If your little one's having a hard time going down, it may have just gotten a little harder, and if your teen is having trouble waking up in the morning, this will pose an extra challenge. So what can we do about it? Dr. Funke Afalabi Brown joins me now for more on this as we kick off Sleep Awareness Week. Dr. Brown, thank you so much for being on. Thank you so much for having me, Diane. So a, a lot of us are dragging a little bit this morning, but how does daylight saving time affect our children? Absolutely. So the way daylight saving time in, impacts our children has so many dimensions. First, they're losing an hour of sleep. So that already means that they may start to experience some grogginess. Our younger kids may tend to be more fussy, irritable. They may tend to have more hyperactivity. And then our teenagers may just be a little bit sleepier and crankier. So it really does impact them on the short term and even on the long term. Now, I have a four-year-old and a one-and-a-half-year-old, and the older one is in that prime age where you put them to bed and five minutes later they're standing next to you asking for water or the potty or an extra story or, or whatever it is. So especially after this clock change, which makes that a little bit harder, how can you help actually get them down at night? So I think the key with that, what you're saying is actually really common. We call it bedtime resistance. Mm -hmm. For some reason, they have FOMO, right? So they do not want to miss any moment of what's going on. So the key is consistency, really maintaining consistency when it comes to limit setting. So if they're coming up with multiple demands, one of the things I usually recommend is use a bedtime passes. So one or two passes to say, you have two requests and whatever those requests are, once the passes are done, they'll trade it in, they're done. And so really staying with that. And then actually children do like consistency, although they may beg to differ, but they do appreciate that. Yeah, I know the routine can be really helpful. So they yeah. know, okay, bedtime is coming. Yeah. What about older kids? Your children are a little bit older than mine. Yeah. And for teens, this can be especially hard. So how do you help them get up and feel energized in the morning, especially when you've just tweaked with their body clock like this? I think the main thing we have to do is work with them. First, having them understand how sleep impacts them overall, impacts their mood and their alertness. And then one of the things I recommend is exposure to light as soon as they get out, as soon as they wake up in the morning. So making sure that the blinds are all up, um, even though it's a little bit darker around now, you can still take advantage of even artificial light and then getting them moving as much as possible and really helping them create limits and boundaries within their own schedule because sometimes our teens are over scheduled so that they have periods of time that they're able to rest. I think that's really important. So what are some red flags to look out for that will tell you your kid's not getting enough sleep? So there are different ways you could tell. First, you might have them actually sleepy with difficulties waking in the morning. But for the younger kids, they may be hyperactive on the flip side. Which is tricky. <laughs> it is. It's tricky because they're bouncing off the walls. You may hear things from school, like maybe difficulties with impulsivity or emotion regulation. And then if they have medical sleep problems like sleep apnea, you may hear snoring, unrefreshing sleep, or you may just notice that they're a bit more sluggish. So if you're seeing things like like that now me alert you that there may be more going on also restless sleep that's definitely something too that I notice with kids who have medical sleep problems so how do you know when it's something that's say behavioral where you're thinking okay we have a few habits mm -hmm. we need to change a few routines at home to fix this versus I need to go see a professional something's wrong I think it's it's there are different ways to tell this first you want to make sure that you already have established healthy sleep habits in your children when you do that you're sure that they're getting the right quantity of sleep, that's really important, and that varies by age, you have that box checked, you have your routine that you're following, you have that checked, you're able to address maybe some of those bedtime resistance and pushing back, and then you're noticing like, you know, more of the snoring or the restless sleep or, you know, persistent sleep terrors or nightmares and things like that, that may clue you in to say, okay, this is just beyond the sleep hygiene. This probably needs the help of my physician or a sleep expert to help deal with what exactly is going on. So you feel like you're doing everything you can, but you're yep. still seeing these issues. Contact a professional. Absolutely. All right, Dr. Funke Abelabriyan, it's so great to have you on. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much. I need to get my signature from your book. Oh, <laughs> that I can do for you. Dr. Brown, thank you. Thank you. Coming up, celebrate.